Hello, and thank you for watching this video. The new BioWork as of 2020, Unit 5 Study Guide. The study guide was created by NC Bio Network, but this presentation and answers were written by Nicholas Hindley. All answers are guaranteed not to be completely, totally accurate. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to match, uh, start off here with uh, different matching um, and trying to get these different things appropriate here. So let's see. We have uh, PD pumps, PD pumps. Um, we have our E, uh, moves fluids in the process using lobes, pistons, or diaphragms. Diaphragm valve, then, is D, a throttling valve that is suitable for use in clean steam utilities. Uh, rupture disc is uh, B, safety device on a vessel that will burst at a certain pressure. Check valves are A, pre prevents the reversal of fluid flow in a pipe. And transfer panel has to be C, a place to switch the flow of process fluid from point to point. You do need to know all of these definitions. Baffles are a part of a tank. They are added to the inside of a tank in order to improve mixing by causing turbulence. These are the, um, usually like wall plates inside of a tank. A uh, sparger is a part of a tank that bubbles air or other gases through the liquid in a tank or bioreactor. It can be used to measure depth, but a lot of times it's used to introduce gases to the reaction. Uh, spray balls are tank parts that are used to clean the inside of a tank during the clean in place process. Uh, when I first heard the term clean in place, I thought it was kind of silly, but then you realize a uh, tank that holds thousands of liters, you're not going to take that over to a dishwasher and stick it in like you would a pot in your kitchen. And finally, vents are the part of a tank that relieves extra pressure in order to prevent tanks from exploding. Um, they often have filters that prevent contaminants from entering or leaving the tank. Um, then we get to the question and answer portion of this. The short answer is probably what I would refer to this as. What must a facility do when disposing of biological waste? Explain the significance of organic load. Um, well, when we're getting rid of biological waste, we have to make sure it's dead. It cannot be alive. So to do that, we adjust the pH to neutral, usually after raising the pH really high to base levels to kill anything living. We control the temperature. We don't want it too hot. That will actually deoxygenate water. And we reduce the organic load by getting rid of these materials. These things could actually cause, uh, excuse me, could actually act as food for um, algae blooms and things like that. So other microbes could actually feed off of this. So you want to reduce the organic load. Um, upstream processes include inoculation, where um, viruses or bacteria, whatever it is that you're dealing with, is introduced to media. Media is the growth, growth food that these um, organisms will probably be grown, grown in. And then these microbes are actually grown in the bioreactors. Um, these microbes are what produce our product. And once they have produced our product, we have downstream processing. Downstream processing filters the product out and recovers that product. Um, in various ways. One way we might do this is through separation. This is where the target biological product is recovered from the host cell. Purification allows us to get rid of any impurities, the things that we don't want that are not part of the process in general. Um, and there are lots of ways to purify things. And then formulation, eventually, whatever this bulk product is, we need to fill it into the form that is needed by the customer. The customer may need vials, they may need peels, they may need it to be freeze-dried. Um, again, as I've said in class, I use Advil as an, or Tylenol as an example for this because you can buy it in liquid gels, you can buy it in capsules, you can buy it in tablets, you can buy it um, in liquid form. There's lots of different forms for it. Now granted, each one is slightly different, and likewise, all of these modes um, need to be taken care of as appropriate. Different countries may require different um, uh, de desires or needs as well. Um, explain the difference between inputs and outputs and what occurs during each. Um, inputs include your raw materials, the labor, and the energy. Outputs include your product, uh, waste, and there's always going to be some waste heat. 
Um, as the second law of thermodynamics says that when energy changes form, some of it is going to be converted into low quality waste heat and some of that is going to come off. But do notice waste and heat are two separate things. What role or roles do compressed gases play in bioprocessing? Um, I think there are roughly four of them. They are used to support growth as needed. They blanket the processed liquids to prevent unwanted reactions. So for instance, oxygen um, may be a needed liquid um, gas in some places. In some places, it will actually cause a reaction we don't want. So we may blanket it with something with an inert gas like nitrogen or argon. They also provide power to operate valves and other equipment. And um, there was one more use for compressed gases um, to transfer fluids that I did not put in the presentation here, and I do apologize for that. Um, discharge pressure and suction pressure. Suction pressure occurs where the fluid enters. Discharge pressure is where the fluid exits. And suction pressure must always be greater than discharge pressure in order for operation of the pump to operate appropriately. Then we get to our next set of questions. Number 18 lists the equipment that may be used to heat or cool a process solution. Um, to heat things, you can use jackets that wrap around tanks. You can also use heat exchangers. I left off heating cools, coils, but that would be another one as well. Uh, for cooling things, we could use chillers. This is like the AC in your vehicle and cooling towers as well. Um, what is the difference between a dynamic seal and a static seal? Uh, seals help connect pipes, pumps, and valves and help creep, uh, make sure that they are not leak. Um, they will not leak, that they're leak proof. Um, dynamic seals will move with the substance, whereas static seals do not move. They stay in one location. Um, like an O-ring on a thermos bottle would be a good example of a static seal. Dynamic seals might be like on an engine or a piston or something to that effect. All right, number 20, be very careful here. It's not asking you to define Wi-Fi. It's asking you to define WFI. WFI is water for injection. It is made from type 3 water, and it's used by plants for processes where the product needs to be highly pure and might be used in things such as drugs or vaccines. I think it helps to remember if you think of water for injection as in you might inject it inside the human body, you want it to be as pure as possible. Not sure that that's where the term comes from, but I think it's a good mnemonic if nothing else. Describe the steps of the sterilization process. Whoops, sorry, wrong button. First, you need to do a leak test. So you need to make sure that uh, there's no leaking occurring from the device. You must make sure the temperature reaches 121 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is very important for sterile, anything to be considered sterile, and often 15 PSI gauge as well. Sanitary piping must be used, which if you remember means stainless steel and several other um, things, such as it cannot be flat, no 90 degrees or sharp bends, um, and no places where the liquid can collect and stagnate. Then we get to my second favorite part, which is fill in the blank. A, well, maybe matching is second favorite. We'll see. Uh, blank is used to regulate the fluid flow and pressure. That would be a valve. Blank are used to make connections leak proof between pipe and pumps and valves. We just talked about that. That were seals. Um, an output of the biomanufacturing process is a product. Process equipment must be conducted of materials that are compatible with the process materials. Um, you don't want to mix two things that should not be mixed. To ensure sterility during the SIP process, the temperature must reach at least 121 degrees Celsius. A special type of mixing tank that is used for chemical reactions or for growing cell cultures is known as a reactor or a bioreactor. You may see both terms used, uh, but I tend to think of a reactor as like, you know, a nuclear power plant, but a bioreactor is what we're doing here. But a reactor in this case does refer to the same thing. Intermitted positioning adjustment that delivers metered flow rates between fully opened and fully closed positions is known as throttling. Uh, this is a type of valve, basically. So um, we have multiple levels. It's not just on, it's not just off. Think of it like the dimmer switch for your lights that allow you to have maybe 50% light. And finally, the part of the valve that acts as the flow control element and replaces the hand wheel on automated control valves would be called an actuator. 
an actuator is that part. And then we get to my favorite part, which is the modified true-false. Um, I think these are very good for studying because there's usually multiple ways you can figure out how they are. And again, by the way, a friendly reminder, if I'm going too fast, uh, and if I, regardless of how quickly I'm going, be sure to pause and make sure you have the answers to this. Don't just sit there, listen to what I say, nod your head and write it down, because ultimately that's not going to help you. The liquid cells are grown in is called bulk product. That is false. Um, I would correct this by changing bulk product to say growth medium. The lick, so it would read the liquid cells are grown in, is, the liquid that cells are grown in is called growth medium. And there should be a that in there as well, but I didn't write these questions. 31, the control room is the plant area in which you would find process control computers. Um, that sounds right, actually. That's true. High voltage is used to power instrumentation systems and facility lighting. Um, I mean, we're, when we say facility light, and it sounds very fancy, but we're just talking about the lights that we use as, to see. So um, that would be false. Um, instead, the best way to correct this would probably be change high to low. Piping is designed to include sharp 90-degree bends. I would say false. And the best way to correct this sentence is probably to say to include no sharp 90-degree bends. Um, I would insert the word no there. Flexible batch size is a benefit of semi-continuous processing. Um, that is true. Sanitary piping is another term used for hygienic piping. I think I have that misspelled. I do apologize. Um, that is true. I think it's E-I and not I-E. I may be wrong. Deionization is the process of removing calcium and magnesium compounds from water. Um, that is false. Um, the best way, I think, to correct this is to say water softening is the process of removing calcium and magnesium compounds from water. Uh, deionization tends to remove all the other ions as well, but specifically calcium and magnesium, that's called water softening because calcium and magnesium are what cause hard water. Dirty steam is also known as facility steam and used to treat waste. That is true. Remember, if OSHA comes around or does an audit, you do not want to call the plant steam dirty steam. Ultrafiltration is when a solution passes through a filter with large pores and allow large molecules to pass through. I would say that is false. Um, the best way to probably change this one is to say change large to small. Small molecules can pass through, not large molecules. Um, so ultrafiltration is only going to allow very, very tiny things through. It's not going to let the big things through because that's what a filter does. It blocks out the big particles. Thank you so much, and I hope you found this helpful.